So I wanted the book to have meters. So you turned the centimeters into meters? I turned the eight centimeters, yes. I turned the centimeters into meters. Okay. And why did you switch them around if you already if you didn't have time? Why did I switch them around? Yeah. If I didn't switch them around, let's, let's say I started from here, or I can start from either of them. If I start from here, the displacement, how far it's going down is 0 0.08, is equal to 7.55 times time. And then you divide by 7.55. So that's, since that's what I have over here. Is, is the problem the fact that I jump from here to here? Is that one of the issues? I'm just trying to see how you, what made you plug in the eight to the point zero eight. Because I know that I'm stopping in terms of what formulas do I have? Well, the formula I have for time, I need to know the average velocity and how far it actually traveled. Okay, so I don't use the 15.099 meters. You use the eight instead, because that's where it's the limit. The 15.099 meters, that's meters per second. Yeah. So that's a speed or a velocity. I, I care about how far did it actually go. Okay. That's why I'm using that. Anybody come up with an answer for this? 0 0.11. 0.11? 0.11. I mean, rounded. Point zero one L. Units? Seconds. It's time. If you had not converted the eight, if you kept it as eight centimeters, then you would have ended up with one point one, but the units would have been second centimeters per meter, which is an odd time unit. It's legitimate, but it's much more complicated, I believe, to have international standard units and non-international standard units because then you have to keep track of all of them as you go. So what would the question say if they were asking for that? Yeah. The question the question in the master set was how long does it take to stop? How long does it take to stop? From the time it takes when it first touches the pavement to actually stopping. So how long does it take to stop? Okay. What would it be asking if it was asking for the other one? How long did How long? it take to fall? Okay. And that's what we're doing? The, this is how long did it take to stop, okay. and this is how long did it take to fall. So what about that? What is the average velocity uh, from the moment it touches the pavement to being at rest? Well, it, it's going 15.099 meters per second when it first touches, uh -huh. and it's going zero when it stops. So the average is just the average of those two numbers. Okay, that's what that's what I got confused at. Okay. Okay. And then checking myself. Okay. Yeah. The average velocity for the free fall and the average velocity for the stopping are the same. Okay. That's where I was getting confused. <laughs> okay. So what you're saying is the questions for C and D on number eight are pretty much asking for the same. I I think so if I read my notes correctly. Okay, so it's C and D is those, right? Yeah, so okay. if this were the problem, again, the numbers in the Astro Center are actually yeah, different. Yeah. Uh, the answer to A is, that's the answer to A. The answer to B, the answer to C, the answer to D, the answer to E. And then the last one is what's the acceleration as it stops? <clears throat> and this goes back to the formula for acceleration. Change in velocity over time or change in time. I know how much time it took. I know what the change, I know enough information to find the change in velocity. And so it becomes plug and chug. 
So change is always final minus initial over time. I end up at zero while I'm stopping. I, I, I've stopped at the end, minus the 15.099 divided by 0 0.011 seconds. I get the meters per second on top. So I get negative 15.099 divided by 0. That minus sign does matter. And so that's roughly 1,520. Negative. Negative 1,372. 372? Now I realize it should have been less than 1509, but I was just expecting that far. Okay. Yeah, 160. Or I thought I was just giving you a minute, but I did it again. I got the same. Okay, minutes. okay. All right. Sorry to adapt you. No, you're fine. Units. Meters per second squared. Yes. Now, if you were on Earth and experienced that. It would probably kill you. As you can imagine, if you fell off a six-story building and hit the pavement, it probably would kill you. Even if it is spongy. Yeah, that would be roughly 137 Gs you'd be experiencing. Fortunately, this is not a who killed Kenny, or oh my god, Kenny's dead problem. So. I do have a test that I've done for 251 and 151 where Kenny does get thrown out of the window. If you're not familiar with Kenny, he's a cartoon character who's died in many, many episodes of South, South Park. All right. Uh, number 16, think about also lab stuff. Why don't we take a small break here, stretch legs, come back, we'll do all about number 16, and then we'll go into the lab. Yeah, the, the old test problem that I'm using here, I realized that this is the one where there's a mistake in the problem. So I'm calling it audible a little bit. So we have a hockey puck that's going to come down, bounce against the net down here, and then bounce backwards. The hockey puck's only going to be traveling along the line, so it's a one dimensional problem. Make the positive to the make positive to the right. And I did, and one of the issues I had with this particular problem is I did not actually state where the origin is, so why don't we make the origin right here? So we're gonna make that the origin. So anything to the right of the origin would be a positive position, to the left would be a negative position. A hockey stick is gonna actually hit the puck. So the puck's already moving to the right, the hockey stick hits it, just after time B and stop setting it just before time C. That's why I have the parentheses there because the hockey stick is not touching it at B and C, but in between. And also, for some unknown reason, there's friction on acting on the puck on the return journey, but not on the trip there. So somehow something happens magically to the ice as it's touching the net. 
And we can do this because this is a pencil and paper problem and not real life. The whole purpose of these problems is to, oh, I just realized I did state where the origin is. So it is in that spot. The whole purpose of this is testing your understanding of when our position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration, positive, negative, and zero. In the master set, I gave you four different ways of expressing the answer. You only have to pick one of them. If you are gonna pick more than one of those, please make sure it's consistent. I have gotten tests back where people have filled in all four of them and each one is just a little bit different from the other. You know, how do I grade that? <coughs> I think I, what, I, what I ended up doing was grading all of them and just giving them the average of whatever all four of those were. So let's start out with position. What is position? Uh, what is position? Where you're at. Relative to? Zero. Yes. So where are you relative to zero? So there's zero right there. <coughs> Positives to the right. So any of the stuff is caught in any thing to this side is a positive position, that side is a negative position, and this is zero. So, so if I talk about position, positive, zero, and negative, <coughs> it's positive when it's to the right of, well actually, I find it easier sometimes just to figure out where is zero. It's zero at C and I. And then once I establish zero, where is it positive? Well, over here. So from time C to time I, not including them. The parenthesis means that it's not including that value. And then it's negative on the other side. So from A to C, I am including A. That's why there's a bracket there. And then, uh, I guess I to J, or I to K. Now, in terms of writing on the board, this is the simplest way to present it. In terms of your actually answering, not necessarily. Not every student is comfortable with the parentheses bracket notation even though I do give detail in this about what the bracket and the parentheses means, just as a refresher, because originally I only did it this way as opposed to the four different displays that I now do. So if I did A, A then between A and B, B between B and C, C between C and D, D between D and E, a lot harder to write it all out. This one I think is a little bit simpler to actually figure out what's going on here. Especially if you have straight lines. Each of these represents different moments in time. Where I have just the single letter, the A, B, C through K, that is at that specific moment in time. The place where I have parentheses is what's happening in between. So between J and K there is some time interval where position is either positive, negative, or zero. The letter should be places where potentially something is going to change. So if this were my position, right here. I know it's zero at C, and I know it's zero at I. Because I say in the problem, that is the origin. Now a hint here is that at any moment in time or interval of time, 
An object cannot be two things at once. For instance, at time h, it cannot be positive and zero at the same time. Or some students seem to feel that there's some rip in the space-time continuum have had at a moment in time where the position was positive, negative, and zero all simultaneously. Please do not do that. Another hint is that if you are going from positive to negative, or vice versa, you have to go through zero, unless I made a mistake in the problem. It's negative to start with, as a one book. It's positive. And then it's negative. If you're doing the shading in of the blocks, it would look here. It would look something like that. Our question is about just the position one. I don't get the positive up there. I get the negative because you're saying A is included in the negative. Right. And it goes all the way through C. That's all negative. Yep. And then you said I is not not included because it's zero, right. all the way through K right. included is negative. But for positive, you're only saying C and I? Each of these are moments in time. And so the, the clock is moving down here and back. Sure. So once it passes time C, mm -hmm. it stays on the positive side until it gets back to here. So that's just one continuum. Yes, okay. so when I write C comma I like that, I'm talking about from here all of to here. Okay. So you can't you can't do that for negative? No, because there's a break. Because it starts negative and then it jumps into positive and then it jumps back to negative. So there okay. the, it's not continuous negative. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Because you're saying it's still being included. Right. But the question is about position. All right, displacement. This is overall displacement, not instantaneous. So overall displacement, what is overall displacement? Where it is relative to the starting point? Yes, and where's the starting point? So at A, zero, or on this chart over here, and so as long as the puck stays to the right of the starting point, it's got positive displacement, which is pretty much the whole thing. So it's positive the rest of the time. Expressing in this terms, not including A, because A is at zero, and all the way through K. And this is not applicable or applicable. If we're doing the shading version of it, it would be shaded at the very beginning, and then, so that would be zero. And then positive would just be the rest of the time. The biggest mistake that students will make on this is one, we get them backwards. Whatever memory trick that you need to do, uh, I think post office, post office position has something to do with zero. Ocean Pacific. Operation. Uh, there's an O right next to the P. Some say the sillier your memory trick is, the more apt you are to remember it. And displacement's the other one. Ooh, displacement. Oh, no. 
They both have an S there. Whatever you need to, to do to get them separate. I will tell you, on the test level problem, the same is true on that master set because that comes from an old test. On the test level problem, I will not give you a situation where the answer, the full answer for a position is the same as the full answer for displacement. I will not give a problem where if you look all the way across, it is not the same for any two of the two of them. Or position, position, displacement, velocity, acceleration. If you give me identical answers for two of them, and I'm talking identical all the way across the board, I will give you credit for whichever one you get more points for, and I will give you no points for the other one. Questions about displacement or position? When you do an example of position, an example of position, so I know what it looks like. So well, that's position right there, the top one. Okay, 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 never mind. Yeah, position is just where you are you relative to whatever you say is zero. Okay. All right. Velocity. The sign of velocity cares about, well, what does it care about? Of uh, well, yes, but in terms of this, what's the direction of the speed? Well, actually, technically, yeah. speed doesn't have a direction, but yeah. Isn't that the puck? Direction. Sorry. Direction of the puck. Mm -hmm. no, no. Direction of the movement of the puck. Mm -hmm. Which way is the puck going? The no. Puck? Sorry? To the right? When? Between intervals a, between A and F. Not including A and F. Uh, a, it's actually stated in the problem that it's already moving to the right of A. Okay, so it's from A to F, not including F. All right, because F is zero. And A, it's already moving to the right. So it's moving to the right for the first half of the problem. So my velocity is positive 